Good. You're finally here. Now help me close this, would you? Fascinating. How does that work exactly? <laughs> you don't even know, do you? You just wiggle your fingers and boom. Rift closes. Who are you? Ah, getting ahead of myself again, I see. Dorian of House Parvis, most recently of Minrathus. How do you do? Another Tevinter. Be cautious with this one. Suspicious friends you have here. Magister Alexius was once my mentor, so my assistance should be valuable, as I'm sure you can imagine. I was expecting Felix to be here. I'm sure he's on his way. He was to give you the note, then meet us here after ditching his father. Alexius couldn't jump to Felix's side fast enough when he pretended to be faint. Is something wrong with him? He's had some lingering illness for months. Felix is an only child, and Alexius is being a mother hen, most likely. Are you a magister? All right, let's say this once. I'm a mage from Tevinter, but not a member of the Magisterium. I know Southerners use the terms interchangeably, but that only makes you sound like barbarians. Are you the one who sent that note, then? I am. Someone had to warn you, after all. Look. You must know there's danger. That should be obvious even without the note. Let's start with Alexius claiming the allegiance of the mage rebels out from under you. As if by magic, yes? Which is exactly right. To reach Redcliffe, before the Inquisition, Alexius distorted time itself. He arranged it so he could arrive here just after the Divine died. You catch on quick. That is fascinating, if true, and almost certainly dangerous. The rift you closed here. You saw how it twisted time around itself, sped some things up and slowed others down. Soon, there will be more like it, and they'll appear further and further away from Redcliffe. The magic Alexius is using is wildly unstable, and it's unraveling the world. You're asking me to take a lot on faith. I know what I'm talking about. I helped develop this magic. When I was still his apprentice, it was pure theory. Alexius could never get it to work. What I don't understand is why he's doing it. Ripping time to shreds just to gain a few hundred lackeys? He didn't do it for them. Took you long enough. Is he getting suspicious? No, but I shouldn't have played the illness card. I thought he'd be fussing over me all day. My father's joined a cult, to Vinter Supremacists. They call themselves Venatori. And I can tell you one thing. Whatever he's done for them, he's done it to get to you. Alexius is your father. Why are you working against him? For the same reason Dorian works against him. I love my father, and I love my country. But this? Cults? Time magic? What he's doing now is madness. For his own sake, you have to stop him. It would also be nice if he didn't rip a hole in time. There's already a hole in the sky. Why would he rearrange time and indenture the Mage Rebellion just to get to me? They're obsessed with you, but I don't know why. Perhaps because you survived the Temple of Sacred Ashes. You can close the rifts. Maybe there's a connection. Or they see you as a threat. If the Venatori are behind those rifts or the breach in the sky, they're even worse than I thought. All this for me? And I didn't get Alexius anything. Send him a fruit basket. Everyone loves those. You know you're his target. Expecting the trap is the first step in turning it to your advantage. I can't stay in Redcliffe. Alexius doesn't know I'm here, and I want to keep it that way for now. But whenever you're ready to deal with him, I want to be there. I'll be in touch. Oh, and Felix, try not to get yourself killed. There are worse things than dying, Dorian. We don't have the manpower to take the castle. Either we find another way in, or give up this nonsense and go and get the Templars. Redcliffe is in the hands of a Magister. This cannot be allowed to stand. 
The letter from Alexius asked for the Herald of Andraste by name. It's an obvious trap. Isn't that kind of him? What does Alexius say about me? He's so complimentary that we are certain he wants to kill you. Not this again. Redcliffe Castle is one of the most defensible fortresses in Ferelden. It has repelled thousands of assaults. If you go in there, you'll die. And we'll lose the only means we have of closing these rifts. I won't allow it. And if we don't even try to meet Alexius, we lose the mages and leave a hostile foreign power on our doorstep. Even if we could assault the keep, it would be for naught. An Orlesian Inquisition's army marching into Ferelden would provoke a war. Our hands are tied. The Magister... ...has outplayed us. We can't just give up. There has to be something we can do. We cannot accept defeat now. There must be a solution. Other than the main gate, there's got to be another way into the castle. A sewer, a water course, something. There's nothing I know of that would work. Wait. There is a secret passage into the castle, an escape route for the family. It's too narrow for our troops, but we could send agents through. Too risky. Those agents will be discovered well before they reach the Magister. That's why we need a distraction. Perhaps the envoy Alexius wants so badly. While they're focused on Lavellan, we break the Magister's defenses. It could work, but it's a huge risk. Fortunately, you'll have help. This man says he has information about the Magister and his methods, Commander. Your spies will never get past Alexius's magic without my help. So if you're going after him, I'm coming along. The plan puts you in the most danger. We can't in good conscience order you to do this. We can still go after the Templars if you'd rather not play the bait. It's up to you. Announce us. The invitation was for Master Lavellan only. The rest of you must wait here. They have to accompany me. You wouldn't deprive me of my attaches, would you? My Lord Magister, the agents of the Inquisition have arrived. My friend, it's so good to see you again. And your associates, of course. I'm sure we can work out some arrangement that is equitable to all parties. Are we mages to have no voice in deciding our fate? Fiona, you would not have turned your followers over to my care if you did not trust me with their lives. If the Grand Enchanter wants to be part of these talks, then I welcome her as a guest of the Inquisition. Thank you. The Inquisition needs mages to close the breach, and I have them. So, what shall you offer in exchange? The Inquisition has many backers among the Orlesian nobility. I'm sure we can find suitable compensation. I'm not sure what the Orlesian nobility have to offer that I don't already possess. He knows everything, Father. Felix, what have you done? Your son is concerned that you're involved in something terrible. So speaks the thief. Do you think you can turn my son against me? You walk into my stronghold with your stolen mark, a gift you don't even understand, and think you're in control. You're nothing but a mistake. What do you know about the Divine's death? 
It was the Elder One's moment, and you were unworthy even to stand in his presence. Father, listen to yourself. Do you know what you sound like? He sounds exactly like the sort of villainous cliché everyone expects us to be. Dorian, I gave you a chance to be a part of this. You turned me down. The Elder One has power you would not believe. He will raise the Imperium from its own ashes. What's better than turning back time? He will make the world bow to mages once more. We will rule from the Boric Ocean to the frozen seas. You can't involve my people in this. Alexius, this is exactly what you and I talked about never wanting to happen. Why would you support this? Stop it, Father. Give up the Venatori. Let the Southern Mages fight the Breach, and let's go home. No. It's the only way, Felix. He can save you. Save me? There is a way. The Elder One promised, if I undo the mistake at the Temple... I'm going to die. You need to accept that. Seize them, Venatori. The Elder One demands this man's life. Your men are dead, Alexius. You are a mistake. You should never have existed. No! Displacement. Interesting. It's probably not what Alexius intended. The rift must have moved us to what? The closest confluence of arcane energy? The last thing I remember, we were in the castle hall. Let's see. If we're still in the castle, it isn't. Oh, of course, it's not simply where, it's when. Alexius used the amulet as a focus. It moved us through time. Did we go forward in time or back? And how far? Those are excellent questions. We'll have to find out, won't we? Let's look around, see where the rift took us. Then we can figure out how to get back. If we can. What was Alexius trying to do? I believe his original plan was to remove you from time completely. If that happened, you would never have been at the Temple of Sacred Ashes or mangled his Elder One's plan. I think your surprise in the castle hall made him reckless. He tossed us into the rift before he was ready. I counted it. The magic went wild, and here we are. Makes sense? It just seems so insane. I don't even want to think about what this will do to the fabric of the world. We didn't travel through time so much as punch a hole through it and toss it into the privy. But don't worry. I'm here. I'll protect you. There were others in the hall. Could they have been drawn through the rift? I doubt it was large enough to bring the whole room through. Alexius wouldn't risk catching himself or Felix in it. They're probably still where and when we left them. In some sense, anyway. Alexius mentioned an elder one in the hall. Do you know who he was talking about? Leader of the Venatori, I suspect. Some magister aspiring to godhood. It's the same old tune. Let's play with magic we don't understand. It will make us incredibly powerful. Evidently, it doesn't matter if you rip apart the fabric of time in the process. What happens if we can't get back? Then we get comfortable in our new present. Alexius, it's time to answer for your crimes. And here you are, finally. I knew you would appear again, not that it would be now, but I knew I hadn't destroyed you. My final failure. Was it worth it? Everything you did to the world, to yourself. It doesn't matter now. All we can do is wait for the end. What do you mean? What's ending? 
The irony that you should appear now of all the possibilities. All that I fought for, all that I betrayed, and what have I wrought? Ruin and death, there is nothing else. The Elder One comes for me, for you, for us all. <sighs> Felix. That's Felix. Make his breath, Alexius. What have you done? He would have died, Dorian. I saved him. Please, don't hurt my son. I'll do anything you ask. Hand over the amulet and we let him go. Let him go and I swear you'll get what you want. I won the world back. <gasps> no! No! He wanted to die, didn't he? All those lies he told himself, the justifications. He lost Felix long ago. He didn't even notice. Oh, Alexius. This Alexius was too far gone. But the Alexius in our time might still be reasoned with. I suppose that's true. This is the same amulet he used before. I think it's the same one we made in Minrathus. That's a relief. Give me an hour to work out the spell he used, and I should be able to reopen the rift. An hour? That's impossible! You must go now! Elder one. You cannot stay here. We'll hold the outer door. When they get past us, it'll be your turn. No. I won't let you commit suicide. Look at us. We're already dead. The only way we live is if this day never comes. Cast your spell. You have as much time as I have hours. Though darkness closes, I am shielded by flame. Andraste, guide me. Maker, take me to your side. You move, and we all die! You'll have to do better than that. Is that the best you've got? You won. There is no point extending this charade. Felix. It's going to be all right, father. You'll die. Everyone dies. Well, I'm glad that's over with. Not. Grand Enchanter, imagine how surprised I was to learn you'd given Redcliffe Castle away to a Tevinter Magister. King Alistair. Especially since I'm fairly sure Redcliffe belongs to Arl Tegan. Your Majesty, we never intended... I know what you intended. I wanted to help you. 
But you've made it impossible. You and your followers are no longer welcome in Ferelden. But we have hundreds who need protection. Where will we go? The Inquisition might be willing to take in the mages. And what are the terms of this arrangement? Hopefully better than what Alexius gave you. The Inquisition is better than that, yes? They have lost all possible supporters. The Inquisition is their only remaining chance for freedom. No one fights well for their captors. It seems we have little choice but to accept whatever you offer. We would be honored to have you fight as allies at the Inquisition's side. A generous offer. But will the rest of the Inquisition honor it? The breach threatens all of Thedas. We cannot afford to be divided now. We can't fight it without you. Any chance of success requires your full support. I'd take that offer if I were you. One way or another, you're leaving my kingdom. We accept. It would be madness not to. I will gather my people and ready them for the journey to Haven. The breach will be closed. You will not regret giving us this chance. Not a matter for debate. There will be abominations among the mages, and we must be prepared. If we rescind the offer of an alliance, it makes the Inquisition appear incompetent at best, tyrannical at worst. What were you thinking, turning mages loose with no oversight? The veil is torn open. We're not monsters. We can control ourselves without any outside help. This is not an issue of self-control. Even the strongest mages can be overcome by demons in conditions like these. Enough arguing. None of us were there. We cannot afford to second-guess our people. The sole point of the Herald's mission was to gain the mages' aid, and that was accomplished. The voice of pragmatism speaks. Here I was, just starting to enjoy the circular arguments. Closing the breach is all that matters. I got a taste of the consequences if we fail. Let's make sure we don't. We will not fail. We should look into the things you saw in this dark future. The assassination of Empress Selene. A demon army. Sounds like something a Tevinter cult might do. Orle falls, the Imperium rises. Chaos for everyone. One battle at a time. It's going to take time to organize our troops and the mage recruits. Let's take this to the war room. Join us. None of this means anything without your mark, after all. And I'd hope to sit out the assault on the breach. Take a nap. Maybe go for a walk. What is it they say? No rest for the wicked. Meet us there when you're ready. I'll skip the war council, but I would like to see this breach up close, if you don't mind. Then you're... staying. Oh, didn't I mention? The South is so charming and rustic, I adore it to little pieces. I must admit, I'm surprised. We both saw what could happen, what this Elder One and his cult are trying to do. Not everything from Tevinter is terrible. Some of us have fought for eons against this sort of madness. It's my duty to stand with you. That future will not come to pass. There's no one I'd rather be stranded in time with, future or present. Excellent choice, but let's not get stranded again anytime soon, yes? I'll begin preparations to march on the summit. Make a willing, the mages will be enough to grant us victory. Brilliant, isn't it? One moment you're trying to restore order in a world gone mad, that should be enough for anyone to handle, yes? Then, out of nowhere, an archdemon appears and kicks you in the head. What? You thought this would be easy? No, I was just hoping you wouldn't crush our village like an anthill. Sorry about that. Archdemons like to crush, you know. Can't be helped. Am I speaking too quickly for you? I was distracted, that's all. Distracted? By my wit and charm? I have plenty of both. How interesting to find someone so aware of his strengths. 
I'm a man of many talents. What can I say? I always assumed the elder one behind the Venatori was a magister. But this is something else completely. In Tevinta, they say the Chantry's tales of magisters starting the blight are just that. Tales. But here we are. One of those very magisters, a dark spawn. Who does the Imperium say started the blight? You know how it is. Not us. They say Darkspawn were always there. Magisters and the Blight aren't even related. Is that a surprise? No one wants to admit they shit the bed. But if Corypheus is one of the Magisters who entered the Black City and he's Darkspawn, what other explanation is there? We only know what Corypheus claims to be. True. He might be a convincing liar, or delusional, or insane. But how many delusional maniacs are going to have that knowledge? He broke open the Fade. I knew what I was taught couldn't be the whole truth, but I assumed there had to be a kernel of it, somewhere. But no, it was us all along. We destroyed the world. You didn't do anything. Those men did. A thousand years ago. True. Except that one of them is up and walking around right now. Not to mention I have idiot countrymen who would happily follow him down that path again. No one will thank me whatever happens. No one will thank you either. You know that, yes? That's not why I'm doing this. I knew there was something clever about you. All I know is this. Corypheus needs to be stopped. Men like him ruined my homeland. I won't stand by and let him ruin the world. Oh, and congratulations on that whole leading the Inquisition thing, by the way. You have remarkably little here on early to winter history. All these gifts to the Inquisition, and the best they can do is the Malefica Imperio. Trite propaganda. But if you want 20 volumes on whether Divine Galatea took a shit on Sunday, this is evidently the place to find it. That's the Dorian I know, critiquing every book in my library. I wouldn't have to if you could find some rebellious heretic archivist to join the cause. Are there rebellious archivists? Other than you, that is. If Corypheus ever starts burning masterworks of literature, I'm sure a few will pop up. Did I see something by Genitivi here? I could have sworn. What is this about, Dorian? What else could it be about? What happened at Adamant, of course? We went into the Fade. Physically went in. Are you... All right. It was like walking in a nightmare. But everything was real. I couldn't... The Fade is an ordeal under normal circumstances. To be the only real thing there, beyond description. That any of us made it out alive is difficult to believe. You do realize this feat hasn't been performed in over a thousand years. Corypheus and his contemporaries entered the Fade and began the Blights. In comparison. At least you were at my side. <laughs> no offense, but I'd almost rather I hadn't been. No sense of adventure? That's surprising. I've not your talent for survival. And not everyone is as discerning as I. If you can walk in the Fade, others will try to follow. Who knows what secrets Corypheus has revealed? Not all of them will be as lucky as you. What they could unleash. My advice? Keep this quiet. Let them speculate. Too many will see this as a challenge. That's a good idea. There are enough idiots in the world who think if they just use enough blood magic, their problems will vanish. It's exactly the sort of thing I want to stop back home. This... this I don't need. What I do need is a copy of the Liberalum. I'll wager I can find Corypheus' real name. If I can prove he was a grasping ankle biter with no family to speak of, the luster would come right off. Wish me luck. Anything interesting? 
A letter regarding Felix, Alexius's son. He went to the magisterium, stood on the senate floor and told them of you. A glowing testimonial, I'm informed. No news on the reaction, but everyone back home is talking. Felix always was as good as his word. Was? He's dead. The blight caught up with him. Are you all right? He was ill, and thus on borrowed time anyhow. That doesn't mean you can't regret his death. I know. Felix used to sneak me treats from the kitchens when I was working late in his father's study. Don't get into trouble on my behalf, I tell him. I like trouble, he'd say. Tevinta could use more mages like him. Those who put the good of others above themselves. With the two of you... Felix and I? What an odd question. No, I had no intention of abusing Alexius's hospitality by seducing his son. Not that I've been proper my whole life by any means. It wasn't like that. Even in illness, Felix was the best of us. With him around, you knew things could be better. You make it sound like he was a better person than you. What a mad thing to say. Few people are better than I. Very well, a better person, clearly, not nearly as handsome. Thankfully, Felix wasn't the only decent sort kicking around Thedas. This is all so familiar. I half expect my mother to materialize from the crowd and criticize my manners. Is this how the elite of Tevinter carry on? You could almost mistake this for a soiree in the Imperium. The same double-dealing, elegant poison canapes. It's lacking only a few sacrificial slaves and some blood magic. But the knight is still young. Have you seen anything I should know about? I'm trying to keep watch for magic. You know Tevinters. We can't cross a room without casting a spell. If there are Tevinter agents here, we'll find them. What if your mother were actually here? Where would we be then? Short one mage after he's dragged out by his earlobe. I'm having difficulty picturing that. Picture me a young boy of five years then. She certainly always has. Don't wear yourself out mingling. I expect a dance before this is over. Dancing with the evil magister in full view of every noble in Orlay. How shocking. They'll live. You say that now. If you can find me ten silk scarves, I've got a dance that will really shock them. There was an ancient dowager looking for you. Said she had twelve daughters. I told her you'd left already. You can thank me later or now. But you look lost in thought. Something on your mind? Things went according to plan for once. I couldn't be happier. It was a nice, if shocking, change of pace. You should be celebrating. Enjoy yourself while you can. What you need is a distraction. I have just the thing. Let's dance. I was hoping you'd ask. Thank goodness one of us has a little initiative. Marvelous business, the Winter Palace. An empress dead, an emperor under your spell, and that elven harpy eating out of your hand, if she doesn't bite it off. All this dancing, politics, and murder ah, makes me a bit homesick. That's something you'd like to do more often, then? Watch as you twist an entire empire around your little finger. Yes, please. Of course, that leaves only to Winter, and it wouldn't work as well there. No? Why not? Our dances are so much more intense. If an evening lacks a murder, we sniff and call it a ball. I hope you tried the ham they were serving, by the way. It tasted of despair. It's fascinating. It occurs to me that I barely know anything about you. Beyond my being a mage from Tevinter, you mean? Beyond that, yes. And beyond my being so charming and well-dressed, which is obvious to anyone. I'm well aware of your finer qualities, believe me. Of course I believe you. The moment I saw you, I thought, 
There's a man who knows quality. Now, what was I talking about? Ah, yes, me. I am the scion of House Parvis, a product of generations of careful breeding and the repository of its hopes and dreams. Naturally, I despised it all. The lies, the scheming, the illusions of supremacy. That's Tevinter in a nutshell, isn't it? Needless to say, my family was not happy with my choices. What do you mean by generations of careful breeding? The great families of Tevinter don't have children. They refine traits, weed out the undesirable, and promote the rest. My mother was chosen for my father because magic runs strongly in her blood. Never mind that they loathed each other. They wanted a son who could become Archon to make House Parvis the envy of the Imperium. They got me. A cautionary tale that you should be careful what you wish for. Why would your family be upset with your choices? Because I rejected their idyllic plan. If they had their way, by now I'd be married to some unlucky girl from a powerful family. We'd live in luxurious despair, despising each other as I waited to take my father's place in the Magisterium. I declined the honor, and thus it's best I'm far from home. Less of an embarrassment that way, you see. I'm getting the impression that you don't care much for your homeland. On the contrary. I care for my homeland a great deal. There's so much potential. Sadly, we squander it. We refuse to acknowledge how far we've fallen because pretending is easier. We pretend the Canari can be beaten. We pretend that we're superior to everyone, even our own people. Not everyone feels that way. I don't. Sadly, we're the minority. It just seems... so much of what you say about the Imperium is entirely negative. It might sound that way. For all our faults, my people have many virtues. We are laden with history and culture. Tevinter is where Thedas truly began, remember? We treasure our past and preserve it. You can walk down a side street and find nothing built during the modern ages. And despite appearances, we care deeply about everything. We have no reserve, not in war and not in love. If I truly believed my homeland was beyond all hope, I wouldn't miss it so much. Why remain with the Inquisition? Why not go back to Devinter? <laughs> I'm not exactly welcome back home. Not that it matters, I'm quite accustomed to being a pariah. It adds to my charm. I can do more for Devinter here. If the Venatori succeed, it'll set my homeland back a thousand years. I'm sure some Magisters would disagree, but that's why we kill them. I think I've heard enough. That's too bad. I never tire of talking about myself. I'd like to ask you about Tevinta. Ah, yes. Everyone outside the Imperium always seems quite fascinated by it. Probably why they come up with so many ridiculous tales. Flying cows over Minrathus. That's <laughs> madness. All right, that one's actually true, but the cows didn't have wings. I digress. Anything in particular you wanted to know? Just how often is blood magic used there? Oh, not at all. Not at all? That's what any Magister would tell you. They'd be convincingly offended by the notion, too. Of course, what people call blood magic here, and what we consider blood magic, are two different things. What's considered actual blood magic in Tevinter? Blood magic isn't inherently dangerous. Using your own blood or that of a willing participant, what's the harm? The problem is that what's permitted only gets you so much power. And what if you need more? You always need more. That's where we get into sacrifices and demon summoning. None of that is done. Not officially. Behind closed doors, it's a different story. Real blood magic can give you an edge. A leg up against your opponents. It's safe to assume that any mage of rank does it. The rest are quietly shut out of power, to put it bluntly. You'd think the Templars would object. I imagine they did long ago. Once, their investigations might have been sincere. Then their balls were cut off. Too inconvenient. Nowadays, only the friendless are accused. And most of them probably innocent. There must be some mages who oppose this. 
Of course. I do. And I'm not entirely alone. Occasionally, there'll be a magister who makes noise. And then the reform talk begins. All very patriotic. Meanwhile, that magister will be quietly shunned. Chances are, surprise, it's learned he was a Maleficar all along. Most learn to keep quiet. Me? <laughs> I enjoy the allure of pariahood. Anyone who talks about the Imperium mentions slavery. It's the center of the slave trade. Ah. That is true. And? Did you have slaves? Not personally, but my family does and treats them well. Honestly, I never thought much about it until I came south. Back home, it's... how it is. Slaves are everywhere. You don't question it. I'm not even certain many slaves do. Well, we don't have slaves in the south. In the south, you have alienages, slums, both human and elven. The desperate have no way out. Back home, a poor man can sell himself. As a slave, he could have a position of respect, comfort, and could even support a family. Some slaves are treated poorly, it's true. But do you honestly think inescapable poverty is better? Is that what you call it? Treated poorly? Abuse heaped upon those without power isn't limited to Tevinter, my friend. I don't know what it's like to be a slave, true. I never thought about it until I saw how different it was here. But I suspect you don't know either. Nor should you believe that every tale of Tevinter excess is the norm. It seems strange that an entire empire would be ruled by mages. I find it strange that your mages don't rule anything at all. <laughs> Actually, the fiction in the Imperium is that mages don't rule. The Magisterium rules. That magisters are all mages is considered a convenient technicality. What is the Magisterium exactly? The upper house of the Imperial Senate, and the only part worth having a seat on. Those seats are split among the circles of Magi, the Chantry, and the Major families. All Majors now. It's odd that outside the Imperium, you use Magister like it applies to every Tevinter Mage. If you're not a Magister, then what are you called? No special title? I'm an Altus, which is almost as good as a Magister, depending on who you ask. I've never heard of an Altus. Upper class. Those families who trace descent from the Dreamers, the first prophets of the old gods. If you're a mage and you're not Altus, then you're later. Lower class. If you're not a mage at all, you're Soferati. That's everyone else. <laughs> we do love our fancy words. I thought the Archon ruled over the Imperium. Well, yes. Technically, he can overrule laws passed by the Magisterium, but that never happens. Even so, he gets to appoint new magisters, which means all the families vie madly for his favor. Thus, the Archon gets invited to all the parties. The truest path to Tevinter influence, let me tell you. If it's a fiction, that means mages do rule, then. Yes and no. Let me put it this way. Mages do rule, but not all mages are equal. If you're not from the right family, chances are you don't rule anything. Maybe you're even a slave. The idea that anyone could be a mage, however, keeps the masses placated. Can anyone be a mage? Technically. The potential runs mostly in bloodlines, but it's been known to happen. More importantly, commoners believe it can. Divinta legend is chock full of mage heroes from humble origins. So they hold out hope. Someday, my son or my son's son will be a mage. Someday. Poor swords don't realize that means he'll be a quaestor at the arse end of the Hundred Pillars, at best. Being a quaestor isn't a good thing. I imagine the average non-mage likes to think so. Counting numbers and shuffling papers all day is better than many occupations after all. If you're a second-class citizen among a pack of piranha, however, your outlook changes. Let me ask you something else. Of course. There's an Imperial Chantry, isn't there? With its own divine? 
You people aren't supposed to talk about the Black Divine, are you? If you mention him outside the Imperium, people make that face. Like you're urinating in public. But yes, we do have the Chantry, or a version of it. Night and day comparing it to yours. Is the Imperial Chantry so different from ours? Not in theory. The main difference is in the whole magic is meant to serve man, not rule over him business. Back home, ruling the unwashed masses is serving them, for the good of the Imperium. Perhaps it started with good intentions, but these days it's academic. The Circles are in command. There are Circles of Magi in the Imperium. We don't have dismal little mage prisons, if that's what you mean. They're academies, prestigious ones. We have Templars as well, but they don't cancel spells or whatever your Templars do. They're soldiers. They watch for abuse of magic, yes, but only those who are weak or who fall out of favor get dealt with. Mostly they enforce the Magisterium's edicts. The Chantry smiles and nods from the sidelines. Do you really call him the Black Divine? <laughs> we don't call him that, oh no. In the Imperium, he's the true Divine. The woman sitting on the Sunburst throne is some backwater pretender. It all stems from a disagreement over Andraste. Marvelous, isn't it? Why would they disagree over Andraste? It's not my field of expertise, but the Imperium believes Andraste was a mortal woman, a mage. Down south, they say, no, she's the bride of the Maker, ascended to his side, divine provenance, a blah, blah, blah. We feel better believing Andraste was one of us. Makes executing her less damning, you see. So we elected a man as divine, the South declared war, and we've been feuding cousins ever since. So the Imperial Divine is always a man? All the better to distinguish him from that other one, yes. Don't think there aren't a number of female Magisters who bristle at that. Why can't they be divine after all? Same reason you never see a man on the sunburst throne. Because that's how it's always been done. Excellent reasoning. Do you consider yourself Andrastian? Ah. The big question. It might surprise you that I do consider myself Andrastian. I simply do not believe in the Chantry. It is a relic, whether back home or here in the South. Something from a bygone age desperately clinging to relevance. It's not an opinion that makes me popular. I share your opinion, actually. That's not surprising, considering what the Inquisition represents. I'll say this. I may not believe in the Chantry, but I believe in you. In me? That the Maker sent you, whether through Andraste or fate. Cassandra is not wrong. You saw that in the future, without you, Corypheus prevails. You are our bulwark against evil. You don't seem like the religious sort, to be honest. If you define religious as sitting in a chantry and listening to a blithering hen tell you how to live, then no. If you define it as believing in the possibility that something larger than yourself exists, then yes, by all means. The world is bigger than I, even bigger than you. It laughs at all the things we think we know. The Maker doesn't need me to believe, but I do. The thought of no one at all watching out for us is too frightening. Let me ask you something else. So many questions. I'm wondering if the Imperium would be a useful ally. I'd think you'd be more concerned whether or not they'd support the Venatori. They won't, of course. At least, not officially. They'll disavow all knowledge of dangerous cultists. Secretly, many Magisters will rejoice at the idea. And if the South falls to chaos in the meantime, all the better. It would be in the Imperium's best interest to help. Surely it could use allies. I think the Imperium gave up on the idea of allies a long time ago. We've been fighting the Canari for what, 200 years off and on? It's a point of pride that we go it alone. They'll sneer at the South behind their silk handkerchiefs and say, you've had it easy for far too long. 
Let's not forget that the Inquisition seems to be an arm of the Olysian Chantry. Anathema so far as they're concerned. We're not part of the Chantry. The Chantry opposed the Inquisition's formation. You think that matters? Don't be silly. The Herald of Andraste. Your very title smacks of the Southern Chantry. You may as well be a heathen. I think they're far more frightened what you'll do if you succeed. That's all I wanted to know. Fair enough. You said Alexius was a mentor of yours. He was my patron, sponsoring me to the higher levels of the Circle of Magi. In return, my successes were his. I had a lot of successes, naturally. Alexius was most pleased. He and I used to talk over Brandy about the corruption. How we could one day make real change in the Imperium. And then he... gave up. He stopped trying. Why did he give up? On a journey to Hosburg, a Darkspawn raid killed his wife and sickened his son. I remember hearing the news. He hadn't been there, you see. Alexius was convinced he could have protected them. And the guilt tore him up. I helped him with his research for a while, and then we drifted apart. That must have been difficult. Back then, I was furious. I told him to snap out of it, move on. I thought I had all the answers. Later, I regretted my hasty words. But we didn't speak again until he approached me for the Venatori. Too much pride, I suppose. Plus, I was busy drinking. One must have priorities. Was it hard being away from him? It was hard not having a patron, yes. I'm not exactly built to fit in. At any rate, he's fallen so low, I doubt he'll ever get up. Sad, really. Have you gone to see Alexius yet? He's in the cells. Not yet, no. I saw him before they locked him up. He looked... despondent. Broken. Not the man I remember, nor the one I want to. I realize it's now your job to judge him. All I ask is, if you do, show him mercy. He hardly deserves it, but for Felix's sake. I can't help hoping there's something left of the man I once knew. My Lord Inquisitor, it's good of you to speak with me. I have news regarding one of your companions. But a winter. Oh. Has Dorian done something wrong? No, thankfully. It's nothing like that. I have been in contact with his family. House Pravas, out of Carinas. Are you familiar with them? He's mentioned his family. They don't appear to be on good terms. Yes. I believe you're correct. The family sent a letter describing the estrangement from their son and pleading for my aid. They've asked to arrange a meeting quietly without telling him. They fear it's the only way he'll come. Since you seem to be on good terms with the young man, I'd hoped... Are, are you sure this isn't some kind of trap? I mean, the secrecy. That did occur to me. What if it is a plot of those mages, the Venatori? Another reason to put this in your hands, Inquisitor. I pray that isn't the case. But if it is, you are far better equipped than I to respond to such treachery. Just what kind of meeting do you have in mind? I believe they just want to talk, to understand why Dorian felt he had to come here. Somewhere private, away from Skyhold, but not in Tevinter. You make them nervous, I think. They don't understand why he's here with the Inquisition. They want him to come home. I'd be worried too if my son ran off to join some gauche foreigners on a crusade. So would I. Although, I suspect there's more to it than either of us understands. Why would his family contact you? Because they don't know you, Inquisitor. I am not of the Imperial Chantry, but they know what I represent. These are parents concerned about the welfare of their son. How could I not do whatever possible? I would speak to the young man myself, but he does not care for me. 
Thus I come to you. If any good can come of this, we must try. They don't want Dorian to know. That seems odd. They believe the young man would refuse, and the letter implies he'd have cause. Yet, they are remorseful for whatever came before. This is a chance for dialogue. There is deceit in bringing the young man to this meeting without his foreknowledge, I know. But does it not lead to a greater kindness if there is potential for reconciliation? If you think I'm going to trick Dorian into meeting his family... Oh, I feared you might say that. The family will send a retainer to meet the young man at the Red Cliff Tavern, to take him onward. If he truly does not wish this reunion, he can always end the matter there. I pray you change your mind, Inquisitor. Perhaps their letter will persuade you. If there is any chance of success in this, it behooves us to act. The Inquisition supports free mages. What's next? Elves running Halamshiral? Cows milking farmers? I take it you don't agree? On the contrary, I approve. Heartily. I do wonder if you've considered what this support of yours will do. For mages in general, I mean. The Inquisition is seen as an authority. You've given southern mages license to, well, be like mages back home. If that means they're anything like you, I approve. Ha! There aren't many mages back home like me. I'd believe that. I never fit in. Bloodstains are so difficult to clean, you see. So we're doomed to a future of blood magic, then? Not at first. But you'd be a fool not to see where this could lead. Thing is, the Imperium was once just like the South. Templars, proper circles, all that rot. Then it changed. By inches. Not that this is reason to oppress us. Still, my homeland should be a cautionary tale, not a source of inspiration. Dorian, there's a letter you need to see. A letter? Is it a naughty letter? A humorous proposal from some Antivan dowager? Not quite. It's from your father. From my father? I see. And what does Magister Hallward want, pray tell? A meeting. Show me this letter. I know my son. What my father knows of me would barely fill a thimble. This is so typical. I'm willing to bet this retainer is a henchman, hired to knock me on the head and drag me back to Tevinta. That would be hard to do while I stood there. He expects me to travel with Mother Giselle, although Maker knows why he'd think I would. Let's go. Let's meet this so-called family retainer. If it's a trap, we escape and kill everyone. You're good at that. If it's not, I send the man back to my father with a message that he can stick his alarm in his wit's end. There seems to be bad blood between you and your family. <laughs> Interesting turn of phrase. But you're correct. They don't care for my choices, nor I for theirs. Because you wouldn't get married. Because you left. That too. I think you should meet with this retainer. Find out what your family wants. I didn't ask what you thought, did I? That was unworthy, I apologize. There'd be no harm in hearing what this man of my father's has to say. If I don't like it, however, I want to leave. Your parents are reaching out to you. Doesn't that mean something? Only that they're trying to choke me. Don't mind me. Let's see what comes of this. Uh-oh. Nobody's here. This doesn't bode well. Dorian. Father. So the whole story about the family retainer was just... what? A smokescreen? Then you were told. I apologize for the deception, Inquisitor. I never intended for you to be involved. Of course not. Magister Parvis couldn't come to Skyhold and be seen with the dread Inquisitor. What would people think? What is this exactly, Father? Ambush? Kidnapping? A warm family reunion? 
This is how it has always been. You went through all of this to get Dorian here. Talk to him. Yes, father. Talk to me. Let me hear how mystified you are by my anger. Dorian, there's no need to. I prefer the company of men. My father disapproves. I'll need you to explain that. Did I stutter? Men and the company thereof as in sex. Surely you've heard of it. I've more than heard of it, actually. No. The Herald of Andraste. I am shocked and scandalized. Such sarcasm. You're not exactly subtle, O oh Lord Inquisitor. I should have known that's what this was about. No. You don't get to make those assumptions. You know nothing about the Inquisitor. This is not what I wanted. I'm never what you wanted, Father. Or had you forgotten? That's a big concern in Tevinter, then. Only if you're trying to live up to an impossible standard. Every Tevinter family is intermarrying to distill the perfect mage, perfect body, perfect mind. The perfect leader. It means every perceived flaw, every aberration is deviant and shameful. It must be hidden. Your father might be here to reach out. You could give him a chance. Let's just go. Dorian, please. If you'll only listen to me. Why? So you can spout more convenient lies? He taught me to hate blood magic. The resort of the weak mind. Those are his words. But what was the first thing you did when your precious heir refused to play pretend for the rest of his life? You tried to change me. I only wanted what was best for you. You wanted the best for you? Your fucking legacy. Anything for that. Don't leave it like this, Dorian. You'll never forgive yourself. Tell me why you came. If I knew, I would drive you to the Inquisition. You didn't. I joined the Inquisition because it's the right thing to do. Once, I had a father who would have known that. Once, I had a son who trusted me. A trust I betrayed. I only wanted to talk to him, to hear his voice again, to ask him to forgive me. He says we're alike. Too much pride. Once I would have been overjoyed to hear him say that. Now I'm not certain. I don't know if I can forgive him. He tried to change you? Out of desperation. I wouldn't put on a show, marry the girl, keep everything unsavory, private and locked away. Selfish, I suppose. Not to want to spend my entire life screaming on the inside. He was going to do a blood ritual. Alter my mind. Make me... acceptable. I found out. I left. Can blood magic actually do that? Maybe. It could also have left me a drooling vegetable. It crushed me to think he found that absurd risk preferable to scandal. Part of me has always hoped he didn't really want to go through with it. If he had, I can't even imagine the person I would be now. I wouldn't like that, Dorian. Are you all right? No, not really. Thank you for bringing me out there. It wasn't what I expected, but it's something. Maker knows what you must think of me now, after that whole display. I don't think less of you. More, if possible. 
the things you say. I mean it. My father never understood. Living a lie, it festers inside of you like poison. You have to fight for what's in your heart. I agree. I see you enjoy playing with fire, Inquisitor. At any rate, time to drink myself into a stupor. It's been that sort of day. Join me sometime, if you've a mind. Oh, I... What's going on here? It seems the revered mother is concerned about my undue influence over you. It is just concern. Your worship, you must know how this looks. You might need to spell it out, my dear. This man is of Tevinto. His presence at your side. The rumors alone. What's wrong with him being from Tevinto, specifically? I'm fully aware that not everyone from the Imperium is the same. How kind of you to notice. Yet still, you bow to the opinion of the masses. The opinion of the masses is based on centuries of evidence. What would you have me tell them? The truth? The truth is I do not know you, and neither do they. Thus, these rumors will continue. The concerns of the Chantry are no concern of the Inquisition, Mother Giselle. I'm aware of that. You risk, however, not only the Chantry's opinion. And if I asked from where these rumors originated... I... see. I meant no disrespect, Inquisitor, only to ask after this man's intentions. If you feel he is without ulterior motive, then I humbly beg forgiveness of you both. Well, that's something. She didn't get to you, did she? No. It takes more to get to me than thinly veiled accusations. You don't think she'll do anything? Do what? Yours is the good opinion I care about, not hers. It does make me wonder. Is my influence over you undue? Perhaps. But it's the kind of undue influence I enjoy. No one accused you of being politically astute. <laughs> not today. <laughs> I tease you too much, I know. Oh, I probably deserve it. I'll have to find something we can do that doesn't involve teasing. Soon, ideally. So I take it you're... Dalish? Is that the correct word here? Yes, that's right. We don't have Dalish clans coming northward, for obvious reasons. So, I've never met one of your people before, although I've heard about them. A little. I hope this won't be an issue between us. I am here to help you deal with the Venatori, after all. There's no need for us to dredge up the past, is there? More than it's already been. What with ancient magisters running about? Not at all. I need to talk to you. Just talk? Such a pity. I was hoping to steal a moment alone with you. <laughs> I need to talk to you, he says. Have it your way, but let's go where a hundred onlookers won't think I'm stealing the Inquisitor's soul. I do love how you're always on the go. It's tiring to watch you. I need to talk to you. About how much you adore me, I assume? I hear that so often. Let's do something interesting. More interesting than wandering the countryside killing random strangers? Perish the thought. This castle of yours isn't exactly filled with diversions, but we can figure something out. Inquisitor! Good, good. This is exactly what I was hoping for. What? Is that why we're here? How do you even know about the amulet? 
I hope you aren't intending to help me get it back. I can do this myself. I apologize, but that won't be possible. Do forgive me, Inquisitor. But when I heard of your association with Monsieur Pallas, I could not resist. You see, the young man sold me a rather valuable amulet many months ago. Then he returned, asking to buy it back. Why would I simply sell it? Not only is it useful, there are others who could offer much more. You loathsome little cretin! That's why you were so stubborn. There is no need for insults, monsieur. I am interested only in doing good business. Aren't you a merchant? Why not just sell it back? I am not a fence, monsieur. I only bought your friend's amulet because of what it is. I do business in the Imperium. Having a birthright, even one not your own, is most useful in select situations. Huh. He's got the right of it there. That's why I gave the young man so much. If he relinquished it, how is that my doing? You want something from me. What would you like? The League de Celestine is an organization of wealthy noblemen in Orlais. I would join, but I lack the lineage. If someone like you applied pressure, they would admit me. That would be worth the return of the amulet. What do you think, Dorian? Leave the man be. I got myself into this. I should get myself out of it. Perhaps you should accept your friend's help, monsieur. Confess, I know what you think, and he's not my friend. He's... Never mind what he is. As you desire. Even so, that is a price. I shall accept no other. Perhaps you haven't heard the news from the Winter Palace or the part I played there. Well, yes, but... I didn't realize an Orlesian merchant could be so blasé about offending the Imperial Throne of Orlais. Forgive me, Your Worship. If it is your desire, I will have the amulet delivered to Skyhold immediately. Please, just think of me kindly. I meant no offense. Hmm. I'd feel badly for the fellow if he wasn't a toad. Here it is. Now I'm indebted to you. I never wanted this, I told you. I didn't do this so you would be indebted to me, Dorian. I did it for you. That's the problem. How is that a problem? Someone intelligent would cozy up to the Inquisitor if they could. It'd be foolish not to. He can open doors, get you whatever you want. Shower you with gifts and power. That's what they'll say. I'm the Magister who's using you. Is that all? Go ahead and use me, Dorian. Or are you all talk? <laughs> oh, you are glorious. <laughs> I am apparently an incredible ass at accepting gifts. I apologize and thank you. I'm going to stop before I say something syrupy, but I won't forget this, and I will repay you. Count on it. Have you been to your quarters lately by chance? Not recently. Do, when you have the time. There's something there that might interest you. I should go, so long as you promise to return. So... It's all very nice, this flirting business. I am, however, not a nice man. So, here is my proposal. We dispense with the chit-chat and move on to something more primal. It'll set tongues wagging, of course. Not that they aren't already wagging. I suppose it really depends. How bad does the Inquisitor want to be? I thought you'd never ask. I like playing hard to get. And now, I'm gotten.
I like your quarters. Do you now? Don't misunderstand. I'm not suggesting we venture into mutual domesticity. I just like your appointments. Ah. Not that I couldn't suggest some changes. Your taste is a little... austere. You seem a little distracted. Sex will do that. It's distracting. I heard a rumor. Very well, you've rooted me out. There is something I want. I'm curious where this goes, you and I. We've had fun. Perfectly reasonable to leave it here. Get on with the business of killing archdemons and such. Tell me what you want. All on me, then. Should it be all on me? <sighs> I like you. More than I should. More than might be wise. We ended here, I walk away. I won't be pleased, but I'd rather now than later. Later might be dangerous. Why dangerous? Walking away might be harder then. I want more than just fun, Dorian. Speechless, I see. I was expecting something different. Where I come from, anything between two men, it's about pleasure. It's accepted, but taken no further. You learn not to hope for more. You'd be foolish to. This is more, Dorian. Right here. Funny, I didn't recognize it then. Care to, uh, inquisit me again? I'll be more specific in my directions this time. <laughs> Show off. I have to admit, it does feel good to have my amulet back. I'm not above a bit of attachment, apparently. Bloody thing. I need to talk to you. Could at least bring me wine? Loosens the tongue, so to speak. I thought we could discuss what happens after. Ah, yes. After. Dreadful thing, after. Let's see. Assuming one or both of us aren't slaughtered along the way, what do you wish to happen? We could go our separate ways, if you prefer. I've been a port in a storm before. I would understand. Of course not. I want us to be together as long as we can. You're very sentimental for someone who's killed as many people as you have. You bring it out in me. Sweet maker. Next you'll be making calf eyes at puppies. I don't know what the future holds. For us or anything. That's my honest answer. Once Corypheus is defeated, when this is over, I'd like to talk about it more. If you would. Thoughts? She is right about only one thing. We should take the power which lies in that well. So many voices. They would be in your head, talking over you. You don't want them. I don't want to risk losing you to a well. Enough deliberation. Give me your decision. If anyone is to use the well, it will be me. So you will take what little knowledge you can understand and let the rest go to waste? And who's to say it will go to waste? I do. I am forever balked by those who believe they know better than I. Drink if you will, for the sake of us all, but steal your will to do it.
am I here? Griffius, a magister wishes to rip the veil open. I must learn how to stop him. If you can help me vanquish Corypheus, take whatever price you wish. Festus by Umo Carnarvorum. If you don't come through this, I swear I'll kill you. What happened at the Elven Temple? It's got me thinking. I should go back, shouldn't I? To Tavinta. Once this is done, if we're still alive. All my talk of how terribly wrong things are back home. But what do I do about it? Nothing. How does this relate to the Elven Temple? It was history right there staring us in the face maybe my people can atone for what we've done there is something still left to restore maybe not all of us want to but that could be altered if you can change minds so can i you would just leave what about us trust me amethyst it would give me no pleasure to leave your side you make monumental decisions affecting the entire world. How can I not consider some of my own? Why don't I go with you? Take you away from all this? I can't ask that of you. You don't have to ask. I'm offering. Tempting. We both know you would end up doing it all yourself. As much as watching my homeland beaten into submission would amuse me, this is something I need to do. But I need you at my side. Now more than ever. Emotional blackmail is a fine thing to pull out of your arsenal. But I didn't. <laughs> I'm joking. I'll think about it. Closely. This is your fault, remember? You inspired me with your marvelous antics. You're shaping the world, for good or ill. How could I aspire to do any less? If it means proving that Tevinter can be better, that there's hope even for my homeland, I would do anything. Solus? The orb. I understand why you wanted to save such an important artifact. It is not your fault. Inquisitor, are you alive? Then it's over. How lovely. And you're alive. And I'm alive. Incredible, isn't it? And the sky is healed, healthy, whole. There's just that left to remember. Looks that way. What do we do now? We go back to Skyhold.
A moment, my lord. My agents have found no trace of Solus. He has simply vanished. If he does not wish to be found, there's likely nothing we can do. But I will keep looking. Why would he just leave? Something must be wrong. You said he was upset about the orb. That can't be the only reason. Now that Corypheus has been defeated, we have a moment to stop and celebrate. Afterwards, you will be busy. Every noble in southern Thedas is clamoring to meet you. The fighting's over. Why do they want to meet me now? <laughs> You're joking, yes? They wish to bask in the glory of your victory, hoping that some of it will rub off on them. Everyone knows Gaspard owes you his throne. The greatest empire in Thedas is at your beck and call. A thousand problems remain. And your opinion will be sought on each one, whether you wish to give it or not. <laughs> oh, now they're lining up to meet me. Such is the way of things. Previously, you were an upstart, a Dalish elf leading a band of rebels and heretics. Until Corypheus revealed himself, they could not see the single hand behind the chaos. Once he did, they knew. A magister and a darkspawn in one creature. The ultimate evil. Now you are the only power left standing. Enjoy the evening while you can, Inquisitor. I was passing through the hall this morning and a serving girl saw me and squealed. Actually squealed, dropped her laundry and everything. Such a mess. She was completely breathless. You were at the battle with the evil one, weren't you? I didn't even get a chance to answer. She hugged me. Hugged me. This is your influence. <laughs> Admitted, you're having a ball. <laughs> I don't trust camaraderie, all these people smiling, buying me drinks. It's unnatural. Mind you, I can't say I hate the notion of being the good to Vinter. I suppose you can't all be evil bastards. The blacksmith said that, and he spat when we first met. I hope my father hears. He will shit his small clothes from shock, I swear. I'm happy you're here, after all that's happened. I fully expected to die. It would have been thematically appropriate. And you, you could have been a martyr. Oh, the songs they would have composed. There will still be songs. Yes, but they won't have the same gravitas. We'll just have to be satisfied with being alive and together. I've decided to stay with the Inquisition, for now. You will? There's no you, Interventor. What else matters? Going somewhere, Amatus? You didn't think one brief chat would be enough, did you? <laughs> you do know we have all the time in the world now. You say that, but I'm not waiting until the sky splits open again. See? Much better. Yes, yes, I'm sure you have all the things to say. Two things in private before you run off. First, you are terribly dull and I hate you. What's the second? I hope this ends soon.